Lagos Racecourse is the scene, and it's the afternoon of Nigeria's great day, with thousands awaiting the climax and resolved to relish every minute leading up to it. Princess Alexandra, with Sir James Robertson, the retiring Governor-General, must have enjoyed the whole jubilant atmosphere of the occasion. The Union flag flying for the last time. This was the dramatic takeover by the new nation's own green and white flag. Hello. OEE. Obviously, actually, but OEE is kind of shut down from moving on. Yesterday, on the 4th of June, 2021 the federal government of nigeria announced the indefinite suspension of twitter from operating in nigeria basically if you are not connected to a vpn you cannot make use of twitter of this of twitter services in nigeria now this video um i've been making research all week and it was just funny when i had when the when i had the news uh to get the root cause of our problem currently we now have to travel back because um if there was no nigeria there would be no nigerians which means me and you won't be in the situation we are now in 1900 britain officially assumed responsibility for the administration of the whole of what we now know as nigeria from the niger company as this ceremony records but there had been contact with this coast since the latter part of the 16th century. Lagos became a colony in 1861. And then, gradually over the years, British protectorates were established throughout the territory. In 1914, the protectorates were amalgamated into one Nigeria. Actually, there is one more important detail. In order to take over the territories from the Niger Company, the British government paid £865,000, a huge amount of money in the 1900s. No matter what you think, the British didn't travel all the way down to Africa to spread democracy. Nigeria started as a business deal between a company and the government. Interestingly, the Royal Niger Company is still much around, only known by a new name, Unilever. To begin the story of the amalgamation of Nigeria, we have to go back to the Berlin Conference of 1885. Basically, the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck called for a conference of the various world powers. About 16 diplomats came together to divide Africa between themselves. Lines were drawn on maps, and these lines remain the borders of Africa till today. The area known as Nigeria today has always been filled with people with different cultural and linguistic backgrounds. These people had interactions among themselves via trade, commerce, and other level of human relations. This is no surprise, as present-day Nigeria is made up of about 300 ethnic groups. If you ask the average Nigerian about the amalgamation of Nigeria, they are going to tell you that the northern and southern protectorate of the country was joined together in 1914. Now, here's the thing. There were actually three protectorates. There was a Lagos colony, the Southern Protectorates and then the Northern Protectorates. Now, the Lagos Colony and the Southern Protectorates was changed together to form the Southern Protectorates, which was that which was later joined together with the Northern Protectorates. Now, imagine people who normally fight wars between each other because there was the Jihad War from the north, there was the Bonu Wedai War, and there was the Ibadan and Ijayu war or something like that. Literally, there were different wars going on among these people. Now imagine coming, conquering them, and then putting them together to form a nation. The area known as the northern part of Nigeria today consisted of two kingdoms, the, Sh the Sokoto Caliphate and the Borgo Kingdom, while the southern part of Nigeria consisted of the Yorubas, the Igbos, the Inri, and it's a few town and villages in the Niger Delta area. Well, I'm sure it was more than that because basically we have 300 ethnic groups in Nigeria currently, so I feel to see how 300 ethnic groups is going to fit into that small demographic, but I digress. So basically, Lugard conquered the north, defeated the Sokoto Caliphate and the Borgo Kingdom. He tried diplomacy at first, but then he used brute force. Now, this man was this man was a terrible man. 
sorry for the language because when it came to the Bogo kingdom they surrendered i mean imagine trying to fight someone and they surrender but you still carry your soldiers and guns and shoot at them because you feel like the surrender is not is worthless like they are not going to be afraid of you and stuff like that so basically he uh, fired on them so after that he began ruling over the north the northern protectorate and it was quite easy because in the north the emirs are the highest authorities that's the um, you know there was the emir of the Sokoto caliphate and the emir of the Borgo kingdom so they were ruling through the emirs they called it they called it, they called it the indirect rule basically it was like the emir that would be giving directions and all of that to the people but the british people or the british government the high commission passes message to the emir to pass to the people so basically Lugard is just going to say you're alpha or emir i want that and see me nobody come outside to deal so the emir is going to take the people that don't come outside to deal that type of thing so anybody that didn't support the government they call young tough well, they tried to replicate this in the south and they succeeded with the Yorubas because there were already uppers also in place just like the emirs so they, they used the uppers i i think there was little resistance because there was something about tax and all of that it has another story on its own but they succeeded nonetheless with the Igbos it was quite difficult because there was no structured leadership so they had to implement like local governments and stuff like that in order to be able to effectively rule in that part of nigeria or to be nigeria in that part of nigeria so now we go back to royal niger company the british girl bought royal niger company and they took control of nigeria now anybody that is paying money or buying anything definitely expects to reap the full benefits or rewards possible now the northern part of the country was broke no money the only way to make money from them was through taxation and even that was not enough because it just wasn't enough to run the country so the northern part of the, of the country had the budget deficit while the southern parts rich in agriculture palm kennel palm oil all the, literally every resource you can think about they had it they had so much money they didn't even know how to spend it sports have risen fast by far the most valuable of them are palm oil products the raw materials for soap margarine and cooking fat 30 million pounds a year flows into nigeria from the palm trees Modern processing equipment backs the extra efforts of the farmers. So Lugard was like, you know what? The northern part of the the northern protectorate is for the British, the southern protectorate is for the British. Please bring them together so that I can use the budget surplus in the south to uh, co complete projects and all of that so to complete projects and more in the north so the amalgamation of nigeria was done strictly for economic reasons nothing else the this man brought together people from different people who had different views opinions religions different everything and they brought them together because one of them had no money and they had to you know, a switch with the other. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we got to where we are today. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, share. Someone asked me if I wanted to make in only videos about social media, and I was like, where did you get the idea? And I now realized that my last two videos have actually been about social media. And <laughs> well, those were the things that was in my mind to talk about that particular period. See you guys in the next video.